Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to add contact fields to a WordPress user profile. And so to do this, I've created a little kind of snippets plugin, and I'm going to just kind of walk through how to do this. Now, of course, I know the biggest question I always get is how can you get access to the source code? I make all the source code available to Patreon supporters at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. There's a source code support level there. You get access to, you'll get access to this plugin, uh, all the source code I've released before and so on and so forth. So that's where you can get access to it, johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. This particular plugin I think is going to be a growing plugin because I want to start getting into doing more WordPress tutorials because that's actually what, <laughs> what I do on a daily basis is work with WordPress, build WordPress sites, plugins, themes, etc. So uh, this is really more familiar territory for me than probably really straight PHP applications. So again, I just want to get into doing some more of this stuff. So I'm going to be probably doing a few of these and putting them all inside of this same plugin. Again, that'll be available over on Patreon. All right. So with that said, what are we doing here? So we have this area in WordPress in the in the user profile where we can add custom contact field. So by default, it has email and website. This before used to have like a uh, Jabber and AIM and uh, AOL Instant Messenger and a number of other ones that were here. But uh, recently, WordPress kind of removed that stuff because basically nobody used them. But there are plugins out there. You know, there's social plugins that will allow you to enter your social information in your profile and then they'll They'll display that on the front front end of the site in certain different places. And so you only have to enter it once inside of this profile area. And then it displays throughout the site in a bunch of different places. There's themes that kind of do that same thing. So there's a, there's a use case for being able to add custom fields to this area here. So the question is, how do we do that? What I've done, I've just created kind of a quick, like I said, a quick little plug-in. Uh, this WordPress snippets one and in that we're going to mess with the contact field. So I'm going to, you'll see here by default, all we have is the email and website. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the plugin. And once it's activated, then if we refresh this, you'll see that we have this Facebook URL, name a favorite pet and hopscotch bebop. And I'll talk about why I put some of the weird stuff in there here in just a second. All right. So that's basically what it does if we enter some information here so we can just enter whatever and we update our profile you can see down here that the information saves okay so pretty straightforward and then you could of course uh, on the front end to display this uh, use the 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 user record and, and access the user meta in order to be able to access these different profile fields or contact fields all right, so looking at the code, I've got just a standard plugin header here. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into the plugin plugin stuff per se because uh, I want to stick focusing on the contact methods because you could do this in a theme functions file. You could do it in your own plugin like this. There's lots of different ways that you could do this. The filters and the function are really the same. It's just kind of how it's put together. So just a standard WordPress plugin header up here. And then I've, I'm creating a class here mainly because I'm going to be, like I said, doing a bunch of other WordPress snippets. So I want to have some organization to it instead of rather just a collection of loose collection of files and functions and so forth. So I've got a little bit of organization. Um, I'm checking to see if the class exists. Uh, I doubt it does anywhere. John Morris WordPress snippets probably doesn't exist anywhere. If it uh, doesn't already exist, then I'm going to uh, create an, uh, the, the actual class itself. And then in the constructor, and there's, you know, there's probably different schools of thought on, on how to do this. I like to put all of the filters and so forth for a plugin inside of the constructor as much as possible. Uh, sometimes you need to target things that uh, the way WordPress loads, things may or may not be available at certain points. And so um, doing it in the constructor may or may not 100% work all of the time. You know, frankly, I mean, there's times where I'm still kind of gray on on that because the WordPress loading process isn't, it's not definitive. It's not, it depends on what plugins are installed. It depends on kind of how it, it, it's everything that's going on there. So there's some gray area there, but if you're trying to 
add a filter and action or whatever in the constructor and it's not working, you might try pulling it out of there and placing it into uh, another function. So, uh, but in this case, it works just fine to, to add the filter here. The filter we're, we're targeting is this user contact methods filter. And then we're going to the callback method in this case is our contact methods uh, method in our class here, All right? And we're giving it a priority of 10 and we have one, uh, one parameter that we're passing to this function, okay? Th that's important. I mean, this is general, more general WordPress stuff, but sometimes different filters or actions or whatever, you can you can pass multiple parameters by default WordPress will only pass one so if you don't specify this it'll pass one and if you need three then you're not going to get the three that you need so you need to specify three here in this case this is the the default I've just kind of made it verbose so that I could go through it in this tutorial all right so the actual func callback function then so what's going to happen is essentially WordPress throughout it if you're not familiar has whole bunch of different filters and, and actions, which are basically, uh, they, they, they allow you to attach callback functions to certain parts of WordPress. This is the basis, this is the whole kind of API, that the plugin API, that's the basis for all of the plugins that are available inside of WordPress. Uh, so we can use this, this function, add filter, to attach callbacks to certain parts of WordPress. In this particular case, what we're attaching it to is the array that uh, that exists uh, via this user contact methods filter that ultimately helps display this contact info section here. So this display is actually an array. Now these two fields are uh, probably hard coded in because you can't edit or remove them. The email and the website those can't be removed. They're not available. If you if you just print out contact methods before you yourself add anything to it, at this point, I, I think in the past, the 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 uh, AOL Instant Messenger and Jabber and some of the ones that I talked about before were in this array. So you could print our this contact methods array and you would see those, but that's no longer the case. If you print our contact methods, it's just an empty array. So these are protected essentially somehow. But what the this filter allows us to do then is we can construct our own array of services or fields that we want to add here and that allows us to create these contact fields so you see what i'm doing here is really pretty straightforward i'm creating a new array called new methods and in that i just have array of an array of the different fields i want to add so here we have this uh one for facebook and so that we use service as like kind of the the uh, the value here. So Facebook all all together, all lowercase, and then the label. So essentially, you have the value and the label here that you're passing in for each one of these. And so each array that you add here is going to be a new field that you add over here in the contact info section. And I used favorite name of favorite pep pet and hopscotch bebop <laughs> to show you that it doesn't matter what you call them. You can quite literally pass in anything and it'll display it over here and you can enter information for it, hit update and it'll stick and you can access it using the service, the, the, the value that you specified here. Okay. So really straightforward. And all I've done is created a, an array of those individual array for the arrays for the field items here and then what we do down here is just a simple loop so we loop through these new methods and for each one right here we're essentially checking to see if that method already exists in our contact methods here this is our this is what we began with that we want to add our our fields to and so we're checking to see if it exi already exists and then if it doesn't, we're adding it here. Okay, now this, this line here, if you're gonna use this ar array approach up here, you really don't need to edit anything about this line or, or this, this chunk of code right here. Really, this is the only thing that you need to edit is this right here and just add the, the fields that you wanna add. Now, you might be wondering, well, if the uh, 
array that you get in contact methods is already blank. Why do we need to check and see if the service exists? Well, because the theme could add it, could have added it, another plugin could have added it. And so we would just want to make sure that we don't have any conflicts in that regard. So um, we're just checking to see if that service exists or not. If, it, if that contact field is already there, there's really no reason for us to add it on our own because on the front end, the front end doesn't care what plugin added it. Right. So if there's already another plugin that added a Facebook field like this, you know, on the front end, it's going to show up here just like it would if we had added it. And on the front end, you're going to retrieve that information the same way. So it doesn't really matter uh, necessarily if our plugin adds it or if uh, another plugin adds it. And if we have our plugin installed, and there was another plugin that was adding it that was essentially overriding us. And then that plugin becomes uninstalled because this value is still the same, right? It's still being saved in, in the same spot in the database. It should just work, work, continue to work just fine as if that plugin had never been uninstalled or it, or it had never been installed in the first place. And it was always ours from the beginning. So uh, this is, this really doesn't care which plugin adds it. Uh, and so, again, that's why we check to see if it exists or not, because if it already exists, there's really no reason for us to add it. And then you'll notice here, we're adding this to the contact methods array that we began with. And then with filters, you always have to return it back to WordPress. So the way a filter works is it essentially it hands you some sort of data, you manipulate it in some way, and then you give it back to WordPress so that WordPress can then can display it how it's supposed to. Okay, so that's what this method here does. It allows us to add uh, contact fields to the profile form. And then, of course, in your theme or your plugin, you could then use user meta to call that information and display it on the front end. And uh, maybe you want to create a set of icons or whatever the case may be, you can, you can do that. And then, of course, because we're using our constructor to add all of our filters and stuff, we need to instantiate a new instance of the uh, class here in order for everything to run. So that's what we're doing in this last line here. All right, so I think that's pretty straightforward. Again, if you're wanting to just use this, uh, maybe change the name of the plugin, although you don't have to, uh, and then change this section here, this new methods area here. And like I said, you could really kind of pull out this function here and get rid of the, the public part and this filter, and you could drop this into a theme if you wanted to. So you can still use the code even though, even if you don't want to use it in a, on a, a plugin or as a part of a class or whatever. All right. All right, that'll do it for this tutorial. Like I said, if you want access to the source code, you can get access to it over at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. Now, of course, this being a WordPress tutorial, we're kind of focusing on some specifics of WordPress, but as you'll notice, this is still really PHP code. And so when you're working with WordPress, which powers 26% of the web, so good chances are in your career, you're going to have to work with WordPress at some point. When you're working with WordPress, you're really, what you're doing is writing PHP code. You're just writing it within a framework uh, that, that WordPress has established. And so if you really want to get good at WordPress you, and writing plugins and themes and so forth, you got to get good at PHP. And that's exactly what my PHP 101 course is designed to do. It's designed, it's designed to get rid of all of the clutter and all of the confusion that seems to be so prevalent in the community about what you should and shouldn't learn and so forth. And all these people telling you you need to learn these thousand different skills. It's really, I strongly believe that that is not true, that the list of skills you need to learn is much, much smaller than most people think. And so, again, I've creating this course and going to teach you those very specific skills that you need to learn to get going fast so you can get started now. Now, right now, uh, I have module one and module two of my PHP 101 course available as a bundle. You can get access to that bundle for $10 off the regular price at johnmorrisonline.com slash bundle. It's also available over on Patreon for supporting listeners at the exclusive courses level. So if you want to get access to both the this here, this plugin, this source code, and the PHP 101 course, if you sign up at the exclusive courses level on Patreon, you'll get access to both there as well. 
But the the ultimate thing is is to really, if you really want to get good with WordPress, you really need to start diving into PHP uh, and, and learn how to write PHP code. And it's a huge market out there if you're able to do that and understand how WordPress works a little bit. All right. Like I said, that'll do it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you liked this tutorial, be sure to like it so they know that you like this kind of code. If you know somebody would benefit from watching it, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with them. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss an episode. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you next time.